This product was made in the United States of America. Carter claims that their hollow roller vessel turning system is easy enough for the beginner. Seeing as how I've blown up every hollow vessel I've tried to turn with my gooseneck tools, I think that includes me. But it turns out that Carter was right. As you'll see later in this video, the first thing I turned with the Carter hollow roller vessel turning system turned out to be my first hollow vessel. The hardest part of setting this system up turned out to be getting my really heavy cast iron tailstock off of my Powermatic 3520B. This tool rest comes with the kit and uses this plate to lock between the ways of your lathe. It comes with two center posts so you can adapt it for use on smaller or larger lathes. The only thing you have to buy is a post that's compatible with your banjo for mounting the roller system. And then you mount that roller block into your banjo in place of your regular tool rest. After that you have to figure out how you want to orient your banjo to be most comfortable on your lathe. Carter also includes one of their very cool Artisan Series Quick Lock Tool Handles. And you can use this handle with other bars that Carter makes. This is the bar for the hollowing system, and you'll see that flat ground into the bottom of it. That has a lot to do with how this system works. The bar fits into the collet within the handle, and then you just turn the collar down to apply pressure to the collet, and that locks the tool in place. That flat along the bottom of the bar is what's trapped between the rollers, and that's what eliminates the torque from being passed on to the handle. The included carbide cutter is locked in place by the round retainer underneath the tool. This actually is a type of scraping tool, so it's always mounted with the flat side of the cutter facing up. Before we can actually mount the cutter, we have to put the bar between the rollers. When you get the bar between the rollers, you can try and rock it back and forth, and you can see why no torque gets back to the handle. The rollers are set at the factory, but you can check that setting by putting a plain piece of paper on top of the bar, and then pulling the bar and paper back and forth through the rollers. The paper should just fit. Now we can install the carbide bit. The instructions say to start it at a 45 degree angle and that seemed to work pretty well for me. Next we have to set the tool height. Because this is a scraper working on the inside diameter, we want its height to be at the center line or just above. And then we want to bring the tool rest up so it's just in contact with the bar to support it. Then we make sure everything's locked in place and we're ready to start turning. Having exploded all my previous attempts at making a hollow form, I decided reading the instructions might be a decent idea. I don't know how much of my success with this tool is based on how easy it is to use or my reading the instructions, but one way or another it worked. While I was getting used to this system, I did manage to get the tool chattering every once in a while. Like any kind of scraper, when it starts chattering, you need to take a lighter cut and maybe slow your movement. And both of those corrections worked with this tool. Even though I wasn't putting any real pressure on the cutter, it was developing a lot of sawdust inside the piece. That also told me that I didn't need to be pressing this tool to get the job done. Even though this tool is captured between the rollers, you can move it anywhere you want, and that takes a little getting used to. After I started turning, I realized that the tool was getting tighter on the left side of the roller block than the other side, so I reset the rollers and that made the tool much easier to use. I found that you can make cuts with this tool pulling it out or pushing it in. It was easy to remove more material pushing the tool in. When I wanted to take smoothing cuts, a very light pressure and pulling the tool outward seemed to work best. I know this whole system would be a lot easier to use with some experience, but right out of the box I was able to turn my first hollow form and there were no explosions along the way. So if you'd like to turn hollow forms and want to skip the explosion part of it, you need to consider the Carter Hollow Roller Vessel Turning System. This is a well-made, easy-to-use tool that's made in America.